Hello there. This is Nelson Olmsted with a story about a man who successfully gives his customers the brush off. First, here's Clint Gruber, our spokesman for Pacific Power. Welcome once again to Stories of Pacific Powerland, a presentation of Pacific Power and Light, the company that has been serving the electric needs of the region's homes, farms, and industries through more than half a century of progress and growth. Now, Nelson Olmsted, let's have today's story. The things one dreams about, plans for, how often do they come true? And what is the magic catalyst which transforms dreams into reality? Maybe the story of Robert Lockwood of Pendleton, Oregon, helps answer these questions. Bob Lockwood, you see, had plenty of time to dream and plan during World War II while he was a prisoner of the Germans in a place called Hammerstein 2B. And frequently during his year and a half of incarceration, Bob would put his dreams in a more tangible form on scraps of paper. His fellow prisoners of war would ask, Hey, Lockwood, what's that stuff you're always drawing anyway? You designing a tunnel out of this rat hole or what? No, it's nothing much. Just some ideas I have for when I get home. You gonna build yourself a house back in Oregon? Yeah, maybe. Well, that's not what I'm working on. I, I want to go back in the service station business if I ever get out of here, and I'm just trying to work out some different ideas. Well, what's so different about a service station? You pump gas, you clean windshields, you grease cars. How are you going to make it different? Wear a pink ribbon in your hair? <laughs> I can't explain it to you, but I'll tell you what. Uh, when we get home, uh, you come on out to Pendleton and see. Well, sure enough, when Bob Lockwood did get home from the war in 1945, he didn't waste a minute putting his plans into action. He took a lease on a service station site in Pendleton and started doing things most service station operators had never dreamed about. He told the young men who worked for him, Now, when any customer drives in here, I want to see that whisk room come out right away. We give them that little extra service no one else does. Now, that's what makes a customer a friend. And that customer will drive away impressed, and he'll be back. Bob Lockwood Station sprouted potted plants around the driveways and among the gas pumps. He merchandised the products the service station sells by setting up attractive window displays, which he and his wife changed every month. He painted a thin gold line around each tire of every car that came in for lubrication. It's a sort of a Bob Lockwood trademark. As one customer remarked, Well, getting a lube job at Lockwood's is just like going to a party. He has pictures on the walls, flower baskets hanging from the ceiling, and... I'll swear that place is as clean as the hospital kitchen. And you know what? It's worth a trip to Lockwood's just to go wash your hands. Yes, the walls of the restrooms are hung with netting containing ceramic fish and other nautical bubbles. A bowl of flowers brightens each room. In the ladies, there's even a bathroom scale. And the pièce de résistance, in each restroom and aquarium, a very much alive goldfish provides the crowning touch. Well, Bob Lockwood's Pendleton, Oregon service station sounds like fun, and it is. Bob has been cited by two major oil companies as a model of what a service station should be, even featured in one company's training film. He has been written up in several newspapers, and about ten years ago was featured in a Reader's Digest article as the man with the whisk broom. And Bob himself says, Well, I guess we've all learned something over the years. It's a lot more fun working for a living when you let your imagination help you do a better job. <laughs>